Let's visit Everglades National Park. Everglades National Park is in the southern tip of Florida, and this video is going to cover just the eastern portion of the park by Homestead, Florida. There is so much to see. Cue amazing animation of us driving into the park. Your first stop is Ernest F. Coe Visitor Center. And when you get there, you'll probably see the only Florida panther you're going to see in the park because they are so special and rare. The visitor center is a must because you'll get a chance to stop in, get a free map, see interactive educational displays, look around the gift shop, and talk with a ranger. You can also do my favorite here. Step out onto the back porch and see this beautiful scenery. After a stop at the Ernest F. Coe Visitor Center, just a few minutes down the road, you'll get to the Royal Palm Visitor Center. The Royal Palm Visitor Center was named after these royal palms. And it used to be a state park. In fact, it was Florida's first state park in 1916 before it became part of Everglades National Park in 1947. This visitor center itself isn't as big as Ernest F. Co., but you simply must pull off the main road for this stop because of one thing, Anhinga Trail. You're going to come across this borrow pit dug out of the ground to make way for the state park way back when. This is a good place to see all kinds of wildlife. You can see turtles, alligators, you can see birds, and if you were to go under the surface of the water, you'd see all kinds of fish, and maybe a turtle or two. Once you pass the Barrow Pit, you're on Anhiga Trail. This is one of the best places to see wildlife in Everglades National Park, if you ask me. And it's very popular if you come during the cooler dry season, which is roughly December through the middle of May. The trail is full of wildlife like this Anhinga the trail is named after, which stretches its wings out to dry after diving down to catch a fish. It can't fly until it's dry. You might see great blue herons and other kinds of wading birds. We've seen egrets, limpkins, and American bitterns here at times. Hey, slow down. Okay, here's a better view of one of the boardwalks on the Anhinga Trail. Some of the trail is paved and the other parts are boardwalks that take you out over the water of Taylor Slough, one of the natural water passages through the glades. I always love seeing the pond apple trees. You really never know what you're going to find along the boardwalk. Everglades National Park is one and a half million acres of wilderness, one of the largest wetlands in the world. Yes, finally, we see an alligator. Everybody who comes to the Everglades seems to want to see an alligator. Alligators are known as the keepers of the glades because they're a very important part of the ecosystem here. They were protected species. And around here, they're used to being local celebrities. The park is home to several endangered species and some species that are found nowhere else. It's amazing to think that people once considered this a wasteland and just wanted to drain it. Here's a gar. These guys are cool. 
They can actually breathe air if they have to, if oxygen levels in the water get too low. There are many different kinds of grass in the river of grass, including sawgrass. And yes, like a saw, it can cut you. Along the Anhinga Trail boardwalk, you might see some epiphytes. These are also known as air plants, and they will grow right on a tree branch. This tree is certainly loaded with them. Check out these white ibises. The adult is all white, and the young one still has brown feathers. The other trail at Royal Palm Visitor Center is this Gumbo Limbo Trail. It's paved and pretty short, less than a half mile. This gives you a great example of the hardwood hammock habitat. Think jungle. Dense trees, including the gumbo limbo tree the trail is named for. The gumbo limbo tree is nicknamed the tourist tree because of its red peeling skin. Like a tourist who's gotten sunburned. Anyway, when I walk through this hammock, I try to imagine what it was like to encounter this as an early pioneer, or even farther back, how the native Tequesta tribe lived here. Back on the road, we're headed to the Pinelands Hiking Trail. This is another short paved trail, and as you can tell from the name, you're going to find a lot of pine trees. The elevation is just a little above sea level, but that's enough to allow the pine habitat to grow. And not just pines, but wildflowers and other upland plants. Try to look for tree snails on the trunks you pass. The pine rockland habitat is extremely endangered because most of it has been cleared for farming or building. Stop to just listen to the birds. Now we're on to the Paheoki Overlook. On your way to anywhere in the Everglades, you might see wildlife like this guy we saw hanging out on the side of the road. We saw various birds on the road, and many times you can see white-tailed deer. The same day we were in the park, Someone else spotted a 15-foot python on the road. Pythons are non-native, and they've become a big problem for the native wildlife. Thirteen miles from the park entrance, Paheoki is a short boardwalk. And up the stairs, you can overlook this beautiful view of the Shark River Slough. This is a different slough from the one back at Anhinga Trail. And actually at this point, you are directly south of the Shark Valley Observation Tower. That's in this other video you can watch if you click here. I'll also have the link in the description. Look in the thicket of cypress trees and mangroves. We discovered a pair of barred owls hanging out, trying to take a nap after what was no doubt a great night of hunting and finding good things to eat in the Everglades. 
Seeing the owls was just the highlight of our day. Thanks for watching. Here are beautiful native Everglades morning glories to sign off. And please watch our next video about what you see if you continue down the road toward Florida Bay and the Flamingo Visitor Center.